Hey guys, today we are going to look at the top 10 cards from Guilds of Ravnica in terms of price. Now a lot of people do the top 10 with the least expensive of the top 10, but I want to get straight to the point. The expected value of this set is incredibly high. It is $140 as of this recording. And the expected value is very high because you have a card at a rare that's $35, $40. That would be Assassin's Trophy. Now this is the chase card everyone is looking at. It will see play in modern. The one thing that worries me a little bit is that it is black, black green. And... It has a lim limitation. The limitation is based on that you, your deck has to be Golgari. Now, obviously, in modern with Jun, this fits perfectly, but I'm a little worried about standard. Should Golgari not be the top deck, will this really be $35? Next, we have another Golgari card, Vraska, Golgari Queen. So... Just like in original Ravnica, Golgari looked like the strongest guild. It never materialized though. You had Abrupt Decay and you had a Vraska. And you had a Tro. So very little has changed. But Vraska is good. I just don't know. Is, is he $25 good? This set is completely unique. Uh, but a lot of the factors are the same. Like the two Planeswalkers will be some of the more expensive cards in the set. There is actually a surprise Planeswalker I have from the intro deck that I think is going to be very valuable. I did look at a little bit of data on it. But Vraska at 25 this is a typical pre-order Planeswalker price, which will then plummet to $10 should she see no play. Now, route is it? I'm almost certain this card is going to plummet in price. Again, two colors. That one, it, I'm not saying these cards are not pushed and they're not powerful. They are some of the more powerful standard cards, especially when we look at the previous sets that they will be competing against. These cards should be played more than Dominaria Core 2019. All those are weak sets in comparison power level wise but Raul is it he like the first time around you really have to bank on the is it and he costs five which is insane for a planeswalker planeswalkers that cost a lot unless they are elspeth sun's champion typically do not do well so we have our two planeswalkers that should not be a surprise uh, typically these planeswalkers would be one and two but we again have a very surprising rare at 35. Now the next one would at the mythic would be Doom Whisperer. This one is quite interesting. Uh, demons have not done well. Uh, they, I mean, with the exception of Desecration Demon being in the mono black deck, the demon themes are not very strong, but it's definitely pussed. 6-6 six, six for Flying Trample, the fact that you can survey all you want for two life is very very good so the card in terms of power level it has a good power it's good toughness there's no downfall there's no like sacrificing a creature or doing all this stuff it's just a very big beater and right now it is about 20 dollars pre-order i don't know like this is a that's probably the more interesting spec to me is this card over assassin's trophy just because it is one color now one card i do want to mention is the vraska regal gorgon it is the introduction planeswalker there's a lot of value to be had in these introduction planeswalkers if you can trade for them at the right price or even pick them up cheaply they trade incredibly well this one i think is going for about 12 bucks on ebay I like that. I like when you have a, uh, a pack or you know what's going to be in it and half the price, if not the majority of price, depending on where you buy the intro pack, right, is uh, made up in one card. That's very appealing to me. So keep your eyes on her, and pun intended, because I think 
This one is very interesting as a speculation, and I just wanted to throw it in here because a lot of people do overlook the introduction planeswalkers, but if a casual player has a bunch of them, they are worth some money, and they continue to do very well. Uh, next, we have Aurelia. Aurelia has the mentor ability, and she comes in very... She has an enter the play ability, which is nice. Now, she herself doesn't have haste, but you get to pump a creature right when she comes into play, and then next turn you get to pump herself. So there's no double strike ability, which you know, it's kind of like you kind of want to have the double strike ability because of the output of damage she can do. Beautiful card. I don't know if the Boros. Boros lacks the Lightning Helix-esque card that the Boros really needs to push itself over the edge. Uh, great card, great finisher for Boros. Definitely something that you want to see in your limited pool. But when I look at the guilds, no guild jumps out at me as the very best guild. They all look about even. Uh, now, this card I like a ton, Divine Vis Visitation. Uh, it is a mythic enchantment. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, put that many 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance instead. I think this card is going to be fantastic, and I still play Angelic Chorus, and that card is not nearly as good as this card. Uh, in terms, of, I mean, it get, does gain you life, which is less, I guess, threatening than this card. But I could see it being playable in EDH. I could see foil ones going very well. Uh, the artwork is beautiful. I would love to get a foil copy of it myself. And I definitely will be playing it in my EDH decks. Because anytime you get to make angel tokens, you do. You go for it. Not too surprised to see this at the price. But uh, it's going to fall. It's going to plummet. This will be one of the hardest hit cards after the hype dies down now mission briefing is another rare so here we have another rare we have one at one and we have one at it looks like eight it's a great card but it is not snapcaster maids snapcaster maids never hit hit eight dollars it was always a known quantity the reason that it is not snap uh two problems it's double blue snap is not double blue so that's good. And one of the best benefits of Snapcaster is he can come and play instant speed as a creature and block and trade should you need him to do that. Great card. I definitely like it. I think it's going, it's very flavorful, but $8 is a ton of money for another. You're, you're not going to, if every box had an expected value of $140, there would be no open boxes left or there would be no sealed boxes left. And of course, we get Waterly Grave, and as we will uh, later find out, we get the Is It Land Steam Vents as well. They are blue shock lands. Imagine that. Blue shock lands always are good. Uh, blue lands that we know will be played in modern, that we know that has long term value even after rotation. These are the guarantees. And I would much rather go for guarantee than something like Trophy Assassin, which looks good on paper, but is it worth $35? Or something like uh, the mission briefing, which looks very powerful, but we'll see. Do we really need Snapcaster 5 to 8 in most of these decks? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we do. So the Shocklands are guarantees. I will be picking them up in large quantities all uh, during this period in time. I suggest that you do as well. Um, the ones that you really want are the blue ones, but they actually are the more expensive ones this time around. The Steam Vents was about $5 when the Temple Garden was around 15 because I remember training my Temple Gardens for free Steam Vents, although I needed the Temple Gardens to make my deck. The trading was just too, too lucrative at that point. So my suggestion is pick up the cheapest Shockland and hope that that deck somehow hits it in standard. Standard will dictate the, the card prices. A lot of times we talk about modern. Is this modern playable? Is this modern playable? I mean, yeah, that's nice, but you have to view that as the cherry. 
the ice cream is standard because that is where most people are going to use these cards. That's where most people are going to trade for these cards. And that is where most people will buy these cards. So I wish it wasn't this way, but it is this way. So there are the top 10 cards as a pre-release, before pre-release, uh, as pre-orders. Anyway, let me know if I left out any of the cards. And hopefully you guys have fun at pre-release. Uh, I will be announcing which pre-release at what location I will be playing at soon. Bye, guys.